Have you ever spent ages dressing a child's chest after a burn? You think you've done a great job and then they stand up and the whole thing just kind of slips off. I think we've all been in that situation. Or maybe you've just got a bit of a mental block about how you're actually going to dress that quite difficult area. Burns to the chest and shoulder are really common in small children. Often they've done things like pull a hot drink off a table or reached up to the stove and overturned a pan and they've ended up with a scald to the chest and shoulder. In dressing these, we want to provide comfort and to promote healing as much as we possibly can. I'm going to show you my my top tips for how to dress this quite difficult area so that next time you're faced with this problem, you feel a bit more confident. Before you start, always think about analgesia. Children are likely to need some kind of opiate analgesia after a burn, and we would usually give either intranasal diamorphine or fentanyl. If it's a really extensive burn and it's going to be very painful to de-roof and dress, then do think about sedation Ketamine is often very useful for this. And in older children, you might want to think about using Entonox. Make sure the children are adequately distracted. So get your play specialist involved if you've got one around or get the child to watch a video on mum's phone or read a book or do something else just to keep them busy or keep them as comfortable as you possibly can on the parent's lap. Make sure the burn's adequately de-roofed. Um, I've got a video about that. You can have a look at that too. And make sure that you've estimated the total body surface area of the burn. Remember that anything over 2% in a child is going to need referral to a specialist burn centre. And when we're thinking about the chest, also think about special areas like the nipples. If they're involved, also take some advice from a burn centre. Before you apply the dressing and after de-roofing, make sure that you've taken photos of the burns because you'll be able to keep those in the child's record and also send them on to the burn centre. And that means that you won't have to disturb the dressing repeatedly. I like to get everything prepared before I start. So I get all the dressings laid out, make sure I've got everything that I'm gonna possibly need because once the child's flailing about, you want to get their dressing on as quickly as you possibly can. Start with a Gamgee pad or something else with good absorbency. It could be a Sergi pad, something like that. Importantly, what you want is uh, something that's as big as the child's torso, because we want to avoid multiple small dressings, which are more likely to slip about. So first of all, cut a hole for the head. Uh, and you'll leave two portions that are gonna go over the child's shoulders. And then once you've done that, cut two kind of C shapes in the side of the Gamgee so that those can later on mold into the axilla. And then just work out how long the whole thing needs to be so that it's kind of down to the child's waist and cut the rest of the dressing off to that length so that you can put it all on in one go without too much faffing about and waiting for one dressing to fall off while you get the other one ready. What you're gonna do is put the primary dressing on the top of the secondary one so that you can apply it all together. For this primary dressing, you can use either something that's impregnated uh, like uh, some Gelinet or Atraman, or you could use a silicone dressing. Either of those would be fine on day one of a burn. If you're using something like Gelinet, uh, don't worry if yours doesn't come on a roller, just open several packs until you've got enough to cover the space and make sure that you are overlapping each piece by about 50%. The reason for that is that if you don't have the overlap it's likely to get stuck to the burn but if you overlap more than 50% then it's likely to keep any exudate against the wound and potentially cause maceration so it is important to get that layering right. Make sure that you cut the primary dressing to match the secondary dressing so that the whole thing will mold into the patient and move along with them. That's really key in terms of making sure that the dressing doesn't shift about once the child is moving. Once you've got the whole lot ready, get an assistant to help you and then just pick up the whole dressing in one go and carry it carefully over to the child. Then you can just lay it against their chest and make sure that the shoulder pads go over the shoulders and that the bits that you've cut for the axillas mould right in under the arms and just get your assistant to hold that in place if it's either drooping forwards or the child's wriggling a lot. Once you've got that all in place, the next thing is to firmly wrap a crepe bandage all around the child's chest. What you can do is use a kind of crisscross pattern over the shoulders and back down onto the chest to keep it in place. And then just work your way up and down the chest, over the shoulders and down onto the torso again until it looks nice and firm. Once you've got the chest bit completely firm, then wrap round onto the tops of the arms as well to keep that in place. Once you've got the bandage where you need it, 
tape it quite securely with a few pieces of something quite sticky. I usually use Elastoplast and I always think that at this stage more is more when it comes to tape so don't be shy with it we don't want this moving. The key point about this bit is that now that the child's burn has been covered and therefore the nerve endings are not exposed anymore it should be a fair bit more comfortable for them. The final stage is to just cover it with some sort of tubular bandage and that could be either some tubinet or some surginet something like that it's really just to add an extra layer of security over the top so again you're making a kind of vest out of the tubular bandage so what you're going to do is to make a cut in each side of the vest um, about a third of the way down and that's going to give you enough for kind of neck chest and torso and then you just need to again use your helpful assistant uh, to get that over the child's head and ease it down their body it's going to feel a bit tight to get it on initially but that's how it's going to stay firm most children probably hate this for the first few minutes but actually get to tolerate it fairly quickly so those are my top tips for getting a dressing onto a child's chest and shoulders. I hope you found that useful. I'd love to hear your comments below. So please do get in touch if you've got anything that you can add in terms of top tips for this tricky area. Thank you.